when you go and read even in the old covenant you will see that God was speaking through prophets like Isaiah even through David that there was gonna come a Messiah that there was gonna come a Savior because the blood of bulls and goats and rams can only wash away your sins on a temporary level you're still by nature filled with iniquity and you're still gonna repeat it so so if you read uh, Isaiah 7 verses 14 this is like hundreds of years before the coming of Jesus Christ that these prophecies were given about Christ that complements all of the other scriptures that are in the New Testament speaking about justification speaking about Christ being our righteousness and why how he came and died on the cross for us Isaiah 7 verses 14 it said therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and, sh and shall call his name Emmanuel God with us over i was it's about six seven hundred years bc before christ that guys like isaiah was talking about christ coming into the world not being born by natural birth between exchange between a male and a female born of a virgin and we saw how that happened we depicted that here also in that story that we did on Friday Jesus Christ Mary was impregnated by the Spirit of God because the first Adams the first Adam was I was in a fallen state we needed the blood of God and this is how Mary was impregnated by the Spirit of God that he might that he might come from the genealogy of the Father himself and come here to die on that cross for our sake so when we come here and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior we have to have this understanding that we are in a fallen state and sometimes I have this conversation with people and they will not in a general sense they understand that they must repent for their you know the different things that they did maybe they stole something as a child but they're thinking that oh I've never done anything and I've never gone to prison or anything like that so we think that we're innocent because of that we haven't broken man's law but we have broken God's law and we are from that Adamic lineage and we are all the whole world is in a fallen state and we all need a savior and the and the sacrifices of bulls and goats can only take care of sin under the covenant on a temporary basis so when we go to scriptures like Romans 5 and it says therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God see therefore have therefore having been justified by faith so when when you hear this message here of the cross of Jesus Christ of the blood of Jesus Christ and you believe by faith then know the blood of Jesus Christ is activated on your behalf and the seed of God is now replanted in you again. The seed of God is planted in you again because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But the seed is planted. And now there, there, there is a process of growth of your spirit, man, of maturity. There is a process of even renewing your mind that is associated with that. That you have to continue in I'm saying this because many times today people come and they say the sinners prayer and they go I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior and then they go back to the old life they go back to live just like they did before and no disregard instructions that are in Scripture consistent with how to be a, a part of the kingdom of God and how to continue 
in saving grace. How to, how to have assurance of heaven even after you leave this earth. Verses 5, therefore having been justified by faith, first you have to believe we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. Before that, we are like enemies of God. All Muslims are enemies of God. All Buddhists are enemies of God. All Hindus and every other Hindu religion, they are enemies of God. They need Christ. They need the blood of Jesus Christ. For there is only one name given to man under heaven by which we might be saved. And that is the name Christ Jesus. No other name. Every other man is from the old Adam. And we need the new Adam. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. We have access by faith. When we believe by faith, grace, and another word for grace is power, ability. The power component of God is given to us that we can live on this earth. And it's as if we are in the Garden of Eden again. We can walk in holiness. We can be renewed in the mind. We can live a life pleasing to God. We can be led by the Spirit of God because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And if we go to Romans uh, 5, let's, five, let's go down to verses uh, 8. Look what it says here. Actually, start, start at 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died. The righteous judgment of God was sending every single human being to hell. But Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps a good man, someone, would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. That's why we, speak, we, we sing so many songs about the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood of bulls and rams and goats could not give us hope. It could not give us joy. But the blood of Jesus Christ really brings us into spiritual understanding. Much more than having now been, just, been justified by, the, by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Any man, any woman. That's why we, pre, we, we go on the streets and even next year, as 2022 comes, I have nothing planned but to go save the lost. Nothing planned. I couldn't care less about a bigger house. I couldn't care less about a better car. The whole agenda is to go save the lost. Before the wrath of God come, and burn them like this fire behind me right here. And the, the fire that is in hell is not as, it's way more hot. Verses 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have now received the reconciliation reconciliation we are reconciled back to God the only hindrance to the fullness of that promise is a few years and this body don't let this body hold you back from that promise don't let the devil the devil wanted to bring Adam and Eve into this being into this fleshy being Okay, He wanted us here that he could control us. We are susceptible to temptation in this fallen state. And now Christ came back to give us that spiritual activation and with that spiritual understanding and spiritual wisdom and the revelation of who God has also created us to be that we might function accordingly in agreement as the Spirit of God is inside of us now. For we have this treasure in earth vessels, the scripture says. So you have that, when you make that confession, you have that assurance that that blood, a drop of the speck, one little drop is why I'm here now. Hello, I don't know, because it had to do a lot. It's powerful enough. So we give God praise that we are here this morning. 
Uh, verses uh, 12, uh, we read that already. Let's go to 15. Let's actually start at uh, 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense, listen to this, for if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of God and the gift by the grace of, of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. That's what we talk about. The first Adam being a living soul and the second Adam a quickening spirit. So Jesus Christ, the second Adam given for the sins of the world. What an amazing thing. And that knowledge is what brings us here this morning. 